Okay, so today, everyone, I am going to be showing this presentation from a computer perspective. However, yes, you can use Google Docs on a smartphone or an iPad. And this is what the application looks like. And it's called Google Docs. It's on both iPhones and Androids. The reason why I'm going to show it today from a computer perspective is because you get a different amount of features. And usually when people are writing documents or essays or letters, they are using a computer screen. However, yes, it does work on smartphones and tablets. Tabitha? Do yes. We have... Hi, good morning. Good morning. Do we have to download that app? If you want to start, you know, using it, yes, you need to download it on your phone. phone. But today for the presentation, you don't need to download it at the moment. You could just follow along with me. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to begin. So today is an introduction of Google Docs, and I'm going to explain what is Google Docs, what you may have noticed it was in the past, and why people use it and why they use it on a computer. So Google, Google Docs is an electric writing form to create, edit, and share documents. If you have questions, you can always say it in the chat or unmute yourselves. So with Google Docs, people use it to compose letters, flyers, essays, and other kind of text-based files. So in the past, if maybe 10 years ago or so, and you recently brought a computer or 20 years ago, you may have noticed that your computer came with Microsoft Word documents. And with Microsoft Word documents, many kids in schools, whether that's high school or college, they would use Microsoft Word to write their essays for their teachers or professors. And it was, it is still used today. Um, people still use it. But today I am going to show Google Docs because it is a cloud-based service. So what I mean by cloud-based service is that with Google Docs, when we're writing, let's say, a paper to our professor, as an example, we no longer have to make sure that we're constantly saving that document or that essay. Instead, with Google Docs, it is saving it on its own for, for us. So there is no save button. Google Docs is constantly saving our documents. So let's say you see that a lot of students are always going to the, the library to do their work without their own laptop. It's okay because they can use their library's computers to get on Google Docs and get right back to their documents because they're not saving that actual document to their computer, it's saving to the cloud. So that's why that's a great advantage with using Google Docs because in cases of emergency that your computer is no longer working anymore or the battery died or something happened to your computer, you can always go to your phone to continue writing that document. You can go to a, someone else's computer and ask them to continue writing your document. So this is why I am showing you Google Docs today. But yes, Microsoft Word still exists and it still is a great program to write your documents. But with Microsoft Word, they do now have um, kind of premium plans to pay for when you're um, creating your document, as well as you do have to create an account and constantly save your work. Does anybody have any questions on that part? Tabitha, I'm yes. sure you're probably going to address this, but uh, when things are in the cloud, mm -hmm. how do you get them? So, how do you because reach yes, because we are using tech. We today we are using Google, right? 
So Google's cloud, everything is found under Google Drive, their main component. So anything that you do in Google, whether that's your emails, whether that's a document, maybe you're doing a PowerPoint like today, I have a PowerPoint. All of your files are under one big umbrella, which is Google Drive. But if you just want to find your documents that you're creating that I'm going to show you today, you find it in Google Google Docs. And I'm going to show you like how you create one and how you find it again. OK, thank you. So I'm going to go over three main topics today with Google Docs. The first one, of course, is how to create a new document. I'm gonna show you how to share a document and then how to print an actual document. And then if you have any questions in between, you can always let me know. So in order to create a new document on Google Docs, you're going to get a decision whether you want to start with a blank document or if you wanna choose a template. So if we look here on the screen, I gave it a red circle. That is our blank document. And that's where we can be as creative as we want and write whatever we want in that document. But as you can see on the screen, Google also gives us different alternatives. Like if we're wanting to write a resume, it gives us a layout where we could pre-fill in the information same as a letter or a report. So all those templates, we can delete what it says in there and we can write what we want, our name, address, so on. We could uh, type it in. Whereas blank, there's gonna be nothing there and we have to start from scratch. But today I'm gonna show you how to do a document from scratch without having to use a template. So yeah, whether you have an iPad or a, a tablet or a phone, this looks the same where you just tap on blank to start a new document. And the first thing that you always want to do before you even start writing anything in your document, naming the file. So all the way in the left hand side of the top of the screen, upper left corner, by default, it names it untitled document, but we don't want to keep it untitled document because if you're someone today who's going to always use Google Docs in the future, you're going to have duplicates untitled document. We don't want all our uh, files to be named that. So whether you're using a computer, you can just click on where it says untitled document and you can rename it to whatever you want. If you're using a tablet or a smartphone, you could just tap on it with your finger where it says untitled document and rename it that way. Um, and that's just the key thing to do always before you start anything. After we rename our document, you could see the person renamed it. Sometimes it will say okay on a computer so you can confirm that you wrote it. Whereas um, on a tablet or a smartphone, you could just rename it and there's no box to click OK. Uh, does anybody have any questions on that part before I go on to the next thing? On the iPad, I don't get a blank document, a blank template. I don't want to take up your time with this, but is that standard? There's no blank document. Okay, Um. let me get back to you. I'm going to look at okay. my phone right now. Okay. And okay. then I'm going to make sure to get back to you, okay? Okay. Okay. So the most important thing is that before we actually start to write things on the document, it is crucial to actually know how to work your menu bar on the top of the screen. Also, for the person that just said they don't find a blank, on my smartphone, are you using an iPad or a smartphone? 
I don't know. I think you're muted, but Tabitha, I found it on the on the iPhone untitled document. I found it. Oh, okay then. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Perfect then. If not, if you didn't find it all the way at the bottom of the screen, there's a plus sign where you can start a new document as well. It's like a rainbow plus symbol at the bottom of a, of your iPad or your phone. Okay, so let's explain this kind of toolbar shortcut menu. And I'm going to have my phone also on as well so we can I can go through it so the reason why I'm showing you on a computer today is because with the computer right the screen is much larger so the full toolbar menu is shown to us whereas when you're using an iPad or you're using a smartphone this kind of toolbar menu is completely different. It's also shortened because our phones and our iPad screens are smaller than a computer. So it doesn't really look the same. So if you're someone here today that is going to try to do it on their phone to write documents or using an iPad, just know that the menu but a section looks completely different it's shortened and it's not going to have exactly all the features that a computer can do when writing the documents so right away on a computer screen we see our toolbar menu at the top of the screen whereas if you are on a smartphone or a ipad or tablet you have to click on the pencil icon at the bottom right hand side of the screen. That pencil icon is letting us know that we want to edit our documents and start using some features. But as you can see, if you're trying it out right now, it does not look the same. So let me just explain what each of the icons mean because even though it looks different on a smartphone, the icons are still the same. So with, I'm going to focus on this red box here on the screen. This is our main functions. So on the first thing that you can see, which I'm going to point an arrow to, is where it says Calibri. That is what our font is, and we can change it to whatever we want. If we want to make our font in a fancy script, we can tap on where it says Calibri, and we can change how our font looks like. Next to our font is going to be the size of our font. So whether we want to make it smaller or larger, we can click the plus sign or the minus sign. Then next to those icons are our standard bold, italicize, and underline, which I'm going to give a circle to. And then right next to that is the colors. So if we want to change our colors, um, it gives us the whole rainbow depending on um, what we want. And I'm also going to screen share the actual Google Docs. That's not just a picture. So you can see it more in depth. And if people here today do want to see it on the smartphone, I can screen share my phone at the ending of the presentation. So you can see that it is different as well. Next to the colors is our highlight button. Excuse me, which one is the colors? The colors is where it's standard in black at the moment. So I just okay. gave it an arrow. Okay. But good. when you thank tap you. on it, it gives you different colors. Okay, thank you. And I'm gonna show it later on as well. Okay. Next, we also have three important functions, which I'm gonna give it a circle. The first one is I kind of like a paper look icon. And what that paper icon, a paper clip icon does is provide links. So what do I mean by that? If I'm writing a document to someone, 
maybe I'm writing a grocery list and I want to provide in that grocery list the actual item that I found on Amazon or maybe I found it on Stop and Shop, I can use that button there to put in the Amazon link or put in the Stop and Shop link. Next to that, we have the comment button. I'm gonna give it an arrow so we can all see. So let's say you are planning a trip somewhere with your best friend and you share the document with your best friend, your best friend can start commenting on the document by using that button there. And then next to the uh, comment button, we have another important icon, which is adding pictures. So if we're going to use our document, maybe we're writing a letter to someone and then we wanna add a photo at the ending of the letter, we use this button there to add a photo. Next to the photo button, we have our procedures to align our document. So sometimes uh, people like to put things in the middle of the document instead of on the left-hand side. Sometimes people want to make the line break larger so they skip lines after every sentence and then sometimes if i give it an hour right now people like to bullet their information so if it was a grocery shopping list you could say um grocery number one grocery number two grocery number number three those are the all the way on the right hand side are those types of functions and these are really the standard buttons for Google Docs. But if, like I said, if you are using a smartphone today or an iPad, um, the tool, the, it's not really a toolbar. Instead, the functions are much smaller and you have to find them a different way. So I think it is best if at the ending of the presentation, I just screen share my phone so you can see the differences. But does anybody have questions on this? Uh, the last, um, the three dots, which, what's the three dots? So the, the three dots one. are going to give you more functions that a Google Doc can do that is kind of advanced. I could show you it when I screen share my Google Docs. Okay. Um, but like, just for the basics, I would recommend the the ones that I have in red, the square, okay. yeah. And could you just go over the pencil? That's the pencil you were talking about at the end here? This pencil all the way at the end here? Yeah. That just means that I'm in editing mode. So I'm I'm able to write on the document. Mm -hmm. So if you would if you shared your document to somebody else, mm -hmm. instead of a pencil, it would be an eye, because they're just a viewer. They're not editing. Yeah. <laughs> but you mentioned another pencil at the bottom. Oh, that's on a smartphone. Okay. Uh, if you if you have the smartphone, if you have the app downloaded on your phone right now, because I someone I think put it on their uh, tablet, I was letting them know that all the way in the bottom right hand corner is a pencil icon, so they can see some of the editing functions. Okay, the pencil's about editing. Good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, on my uh phone, when I go into Docs, Google Docs, it it gives me documents that I already did. Mm -hmm. I can't find the opening where it shows the template and the blank. Right. So if you go all, if you look at the bottom right hand side. Do you see like a rainbow plus sign? Yeah, I see a plus. Yeah, that's how you create either a blank document or a template. So I you... see. It says new document. Your doc, yes. yeah. Yep, you found okay. it. Okay. Yes, thank you. Right. Okay. So because I know that there are some people on here that are, are using their phones or iPads, I will at the ending of the presentation screen share my phone. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay.
Right. So another important thing that I want to discuss, whether you are using a smartphone, iPad, or computer today, is when we are editing, like changing the font, the color, any function that we want to do, it's always important that we highlight what we want to change. So if we see here on the screen, we know the top two lines are highlighted because it's in blue, right? And if we want to change that text, maybe we want to make it another color. Maybe we want to make the font larger. Anytime we want to do something to our document, we have to highlight it. To highlight something on a computer, you have to drag um, your mouse over the words by clicking on the left hand button of the mouse, holding it down and dragging it over the words. If you want to know how to highlight on a smartphone or iPad, you have to double tap on the words. And but once you are able to highlight it, this is how you can now choose from the toolbar anything that you want to change. But that's just an important step. So it's always important that you highlight before you decide to do whatever you want to it. Um, make it red. Maybe you want to put it in bold. Maybe you want to make it size 100. You always have to highlight it. Does anybody have any questions on that part? OK. So let's say you've made your document and you want to know how to actually share that document with someone, maybe your coworker, your friend, your family member. I'm going to show you how to do it on a computer. And for those that have the iPads, just hold on for a moment because I'll show that at the ending of the presentation. But in order to share a document, what we want to do is look for the share button in the top upper right hand corner. If you are using an iPad right now, in order to find, there is no share button. So the equivalent of a share button on a smartphone or iPad is a little person icon at the top upper right hand corner. And if you can't find it right now, I will share my screen at the ending. But when we tap on that share button, we get a screen that looks like this, where we're able to type in anyone's email address and click done. When we type in anyone's email address, we are able to, they are able to get their, the document. It will say, so-and-so has shared a document. Click here to open up the document. And this is how they're able to view the document that you created, whether it's something about a trip, an essay for a professor or so on. This is how they can see it. Another thing is if you don't want to share it like that by typing in their email address or let's say for some reason you just can't remember what their email address is another thing that you can do is just copy the link so i'm going to give it a circle right now instead you can just copy it and paste it maybe in a text message if maybe you only have their phone number right you can just copy it this way and paste it in the text messages. Or maybe you only have them in WhatsApp, or maybe you only have them in Facebook. If it's a situation like that, you can copy the link and paste it that way. Does anybody have questions on that part? For computers? Okay. And then lastly, which is also important is how to print a document. So does anybody here today actually have a printer in their household? Yeah. Okay. Yes. We have, okay. We have some people. Okay. So with Google Docs, you can print some, 
print your document straight from the website. But just for an example, I'm going to show it. And then I'm also going to show it on a smartphone. But if you do have a computer, all the way at the top, we have something called a file, which is on top of our toolbar menu. And when we tap on file, we do get a list all the way at the bottom of the menu that says print. And when we do pre press print, they will show us um, that they're searching for our printer. And then we can print it straight just like that. So this is the easiest out of all the steps by just tapping on file and then print at the bottom of the screen. You do want to make sure that if you are, if you do have a computer, that your printer is connected to your computer, uh, whether that's by wires or with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So some people here may have an older printer that they use the wiring to connect their computer to the printer. And then some people here today may have a a uh, newer type of printer that uses Wi-Fi to print it, um, which is no wires, right? So instead, the printer is has the Wi-Fi password entered into it, and the computer can find the printer that way, which is like a whole nother topic, but um, the newer printers use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So like, let's say, for example, you don't have a computer, but you have a printer, right? You would use your phone to print the document and the phone needs to be connected to the printer. Does anybody have questions on that? Okay, so I'm just going to show you quickly what Google Docs looks like on a computer screen again. Wait, I have one question. What kind of cord do you take connect the phone to the computer with? You cannot connect a phone to a computer with a cord. I mean to a, to a printer. Okay, a computer to a printer. I don't a know phone. the specific name of the cord. A phone to the printer. The phone to the printer. The phone. There's no cord for the phone okay. to the printer. All right. So you, you have can't... to use your Wi-Fi. All right. Yes. Yeah, so you will need a Wi-Fi Bluetooth printer. Okay. And it does not come with any cords. Okay. Oh, so but you can print from your phone. You can if you have a Wi-Fi Bluetooth printer. Okay. Good. Thank you. So as you can see here, this is what I was showing earlier with Google Docs. And if I type something, like I said, it's always important that we highlight it first before we make changes to our document. So as you can see, it's hi I highlighted and then I change whatever I want to change to it. So, excuse me, so to highlight it, you tap it twice? Yes, oh, on the oh, phone. But I'm using a computer, so I'm using a mouse. Okay. Got you. Another thing I just want to let everyone know on this computer as well is if we look in the top left hand side i'm going to zoom in so everyone can see if we see right next to where it says test i have a star move and then i have document status so earlier today i said that google docs is a cloud-based service which means that everything that i type right now is automatically being saved to the cloud. I did not hit any word that said save. It did, It saved it on its own. And how do I know that? By this cloud icon that has a check. This cloud icon with a check is telling me that it's saving the document. It saved it because it has a check. 
And when I'm typing, so I'm going to, as you can see, when I'm typing, if you look up at the screen, it has that little saving button. And then it says save to the drive. So hold on. I'm going to just circle it so everyone can see what I'm talking about. So if you focus your attention there as I'm typing, you can see right now it says saving with three little dots and then it said save to the drive. So automatically Google Docs is doing this because it's connected to the internet and it saves to our cloud without having to hit a save button. If for some reason you do not see the cloud with the check, make sure then you tap on it and then you would have to do it manually. But if you have strong internet connection, it should save just like how I showed you right now. But you can tap on it to do it automatically. Does anybody have questions on that part? Okay, so does anybody have any questions from my computer standpoint before I go on a phone? Okay, so I'm going to then go ahead and go into screen sharing my phone for a second so we can see how it looks like on the phone. So just give me one moment as I do that. Okay, so this is Google Docs. As you can see, um, the first thing that you're going to see when you open up Google Docs is all of your documents. And if we focus your attention to the bottom right hand side of the screen, we have a rainbow plus sign. And this rainbow plus sign gives us options, like I said earlier, whether we can choose a template or a brand new document. So I'm going to choose new document. And when I click on new document, the first thing that it gives me is the file name. What do I want to name it? So I'm just going to name it test. And now mine did, my, when mine came up, it didn't say new document. When I hit the rainbow, it just shows a new page. It oh, didn't it, say something to 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 title it okay well that's okay if you can title it you could always rename it you um, could oh yes where's the, where's the rainbow i i came in late did you, do you have it downloaded on your phone alicia I, i'm seeing what you're showing maybe i didn't i have to download it now you don't have to download it now you could just follow along okay i just need the rainbow thing it's at the bottom right hand side yeah. of the screen. Okay, okay, so if you don't get um where it says someone asks that you didn't have the option to change your name of the document, mm -hmm. that's okay. If you leave your document, so let's say I'm here typing something and I just go back. You can see that each document on the screen has three little dots next to the name of the document. Mm -hmm. And if I tap on those three little dots and I just go down with my finger, I have the option called rename. So you see where it says manage access, copy link, send a copy, and then I have rename. Mm -hmm. And with yes. rename, I could title it what I want. I see. Okay. Do, do you have an iPhone or do you have an Android? Android. Okay. Yeah, so some different models of phones are will have different steps. So that's good that you let me know. Thank you. Okay. Excuse me, what did you what button did you push to get the column that said rename? 
You have to click on the three little dots on the documents here on the screen. Can you make a red line? I can because I'm screen oh. sharing with my phone. Got you. Okay. So I can't you I don't have a pen anymore. That's a computer feature for Zoom. Got you. Yeah, sorry everyone. I can't do arrows or circles because I'm screen sharing on a phone and that function doesn't exist on the phone. So sorry everyone. So now that I have my document here, as you can see, it, right, it looks completely different than on a computer because, of course, right, my phone screen is not as large as a computer desktop. So what they have to do in order for you to use it is hide the features because it would just look crazy if all these tools were all over the screen because, as you can see, there's so many different ways to edit your document. So instead, they want to make it simple. So they only give us some icons on the screen. So all the way at the bottom of the screen, we have a little pencil button. And that pencil button is showing us to kind of edit. So, like, so I'm going to click on that pencil button. And when I click on the pencil button, I get my keyboard. I get some tools at the bottom, right? I have my bold, my italicize, my underline. I have my colors in the letter A. So if I tap on the letter A, you could see I could get different colors. And then I have my align where I could either say something in the middle or I can move it to the left and so on or I can do bullet points or numbers. So I'm just tapping on the tools at the bottom of the screen where my keyboard is. That's what I'm tapping on. But as you can see, right, not all of the icons are at the bottom of the screen, um, like on the computer where everything was at the top. So in order to find more tools, you have to click on the plus sign button at the top of the screen. So if you look at the top of the screen, I have two arrows, I have a plus, and I have the letter A because I just used the letter A. So you may not see the letter A there. And you may not see the arrows if you haven't typed anything yet. Because what those arrows mean is to undo a feature or redo something. So if I make a mistake, I can hit the back arrow to go back to the previous thing I just did. So I'm pressing the back arrow and it went to the to my previous thing that I wrote. And I can press this one to redo it. But you should have the plus symbol because the plus symbol at the top is how we get our extra tools that you saw on the computer, like our link button to add a website, comments if our friend wants to comment on our document, to add an image, a table, and so on, which are other features that I didn't show. But I did show the link, the comments, and the image. Does anybody have any questions on that so far? So the plus sign is on the top line? Yes, all the way at the top. Okay. I can't see it, but I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And another thing. So let's say you want to know how to actually print this document. Okay, so let's say we wrote something fantastic on here. So I'm going to just at least write something. Okay, I wrote, this is a test. Let's say I wanted to print this out. At the moment, there is no print button right here on the screen, right? There's no print button at the bottom. There's no print button at the top. So... For smartphones and iPads, you have to leave your document. So I have to go back 
to my main page where I see all of my documents. And the same button that we use to rename our document, so those three dots that are right next to our title, is how we're able to print it. So right next to where it says test on the mm. screen, there's three little dots. When I tap on them, I could go all the way to the bottom and I have print. And it's going to, you know, give me options to select my printer. But right now I am in work. So my phone is not connected to a printer. But the name of your printer should come up there. Or you want to hit where it says no printer selected to see if it can find your printer. You make your copies, the letter size of how big you want your paper to be, how many copies you want, and so on. And that is how you print from your phone. I anybody... can't get I can't get back to that thing. How do you get back on the I I have no arrow to go back? So you're here, you're inside of your document. Yeah, well, I guess so. Mm -hmm. And you don't have an arrow to go back No. at the top of the screen anywhere? It just says, an arrow says search, but that brings me back to the... Mm. Okay. Um. Let's see. What you can try to do is with your finger, can you try to like swipe it and go back? Like swipe no. your finger to the left or right? I know what you're talking about. It's not it's not happening. I'll play around with it. Okay. Would I would I hit the plus sign or the mm. nothing is letting me go back. Print the okay. layout, so, so what are you what are the icons that you have at the top of the screen? Um I can't even get off this. Oh, there's a check mark. Uh, okay, so yeah, arrows. One, yeah, first click the check mark. Okay. And then do you have oh, the arrow? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, got it. Got it, Tabitha, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so for everyone here, when you are in editing mode, like I'm in editing mode, mode right now, right now I am typing something, you have to tell your document that you're finished before you go back to the home page where you see all your documents. So when you are done with doing all that, you want to make sure you hit this check mark that's in the top left hand corner where you see the time. Right. And then you can go back because you're telling your documents, OK, I'm finished um, writing, so I, I want to go back. So you have to hit that check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the reason why I kind of showed it on the computer is because Google Docs on a smartphone or iPad can be complicated because there's just so many icons that do a bunch of things, whereas on a computer, it has the whole bar filled out for you. So it can be a bit complicated in figuring it out. So if you do want to try to do essays or letters or flyers on your phone, definitely practice with it a bit and you could always email me if you have some more specific questions so i'm gonna put my email in the chat for everyone because it, this is a program where you do want to spend some time actually testing each of the icons out because unfortunately I can't go over every single icon because it would just take forever, especially with the phone. But does anybody have any other questions? Oh, that was very good. Um, and one more thing, because I forgot to say it as well, to share on the phone, right? So let's say I want to send this. This is a test to somebody. Okay, this is a test. I want to send it out to somebody. So I'm always going to hit the check mark in the corner to make sure I tell my phone I want it saved, I finish. And then in all the way at the top, I have this little person icon with the plus symbol. That is the equivalent of the blue share button on a computer screen. So when I click on it, as you can see, I can type in where it says add people or groups. 
and I can type in their email addresses. Uh, let me just see something. If I don't want to do it that way where I don't write their email addresses and I just want to send the link like I showed you on the computer, at the bottom you have, well, you have either your symbol, mine is a flower, but yours is going to be probably the initial of your name. And then next to that, you have like two little people right under where it says manage access. When I tap on that, I have a little paper clip icon all the way in the top upper right hand corner. And that is how I can just copy the link and paste it in a text message or maybe in WhatsApp or Facebook, Instagram, so on.